Where am I? Does anybody know where I am? Hi, everybody. I'm your moderator, Tony Spera. Welcome to another edition of Seekers of the Supernatural. I was wearing these glasses in honor of my idol. But I'm not going to tell you who that is. I think you know. And he's not an idol to me. Well, I had a pretty rough week. I don't know about you guys. We had a power outage that started Tuesday. And today is Monday and it's still out. Six days without power. But it could be worse because I do have a portable generator. So I am able to run the furnace, which, which runs the hot water. I'm able to so take a hot shower. I'm able to use the cooktop. And I'm able to turn on an air conditioner. So I'm pretty happy, actually. Even though it's 90 out, I feel pretty comfortable now inside here. But it is a hassle, though, because I have to go out there every so often and put gasoline in the generator while it's running, which probably isn't a smart idea, but I try to be very careful when I do it. So I hope you guys are all right. You guys on the East Coast from Florida up to New England got hit pretty hard. You know, we got 65, 70 mile an hour winds that only lasted a few minutes. And it took down a tree in my yard, 40 foot tree in my driveway, missed my car, one of my cars by about 10 inches. Well, it, it nipped the bumper on one car, so it took the bumper out, plastic bumper. But it took uh, almost half of my garden out, my vegetable garden, which I was pretty proud of. I had uh, a raised, three raised beds and one of the raised beds had jalapeno peppers in it and that was wiped out totally and it broke the raised bed that I built out of very heavy duty wood it just broke it like it was nothing of course 40 foot tree you know, what do you expect you know but I want to talk to you guys a little bit about something remember the movie or those who saw the movie Annabelle Comes Home in that movie Annabelle Comes Home Patrick Wilson reaches for a box and the box that he reaches for, amazingly, is the same kind of box that Ed Warren used in his investigations. And I have the box here to show you. So if you go back and watch Annabelle Comes Home, you're going to see this box. It's not Ed's box, of course. But the weird part about it is we never told anybody at Warner Brothers about this religious box that Ed used to carry on him uh, to cases. Inside the box, I'll show you what's inside this, this religious box. Let me just put the mic over here. I'm going to grab this uh, box for you and show it to you. This is the box that Ed Warren used. The exact box. Just a wooden box, and it has things in it. I'll show you what's in it. What's in it is a book of prayers. High Church Incense, it's Pontifical Incense, Blessed. Blessed Incense. Whoops, I just dropped the mic. Hope I didn't break it. Because I'm being clumsy. I'm not, I'm out of sorts, I'm out of sorts a little bit, really. And Holy Water, Blessed Holy Water. And a Manual of Prayers. A manual of prayers. Also, a crucifix that Ed used to wear around. This is Ed's crucifix that he used to wear around his neck. This is Ed Warren's actual crucifix that he used to wear around his neck. And I kept it in the box. I added one book. And the book I added is The Manual of Spiritual Warfare by Paul Thigpen. The Manual of Spiritual Warfare. Any of you guys who are really interested in doing investigations and really interested in how to fight evil, how to fight the devil, this is the book I would recommend, one of the books. You can get it on Amazon, but it's, it's a little book, right? But it's about $39, but it's, it's worth every penny. And also, I have uh, House Blessing and Deliverance Prayers that Ed had. This is Ed's don't ask me where he got it because I don't know, but it talks about house blessings, 
how to bless a house, various prayers that are in this box, just made out of wood. And it had a nice crucifix attached to the outside. And amazingly, it's very similar to the one in the movie. The one in the movie, it just blew my mind. When, I, when we first saw the movie, Judy and I, we both looked at each other. And I said, how'd they know about the box? She goes, yeah, I know. It's the box. It's the same kind of box. It's only for a split second on screen when he reaches for it. But that's it. So why did, why did Ed take these things with him? Because Ed used to do simple blessings. Ed was not a exorcist. Neither am I. An exorcist is a Catholic priest who has studied uh, the rites of exorcism and has been trained normally at the Vatican to be able to perform those rites. Now, if you hear any noise in the background while I'm talking, guys, it's probably the air conditioner <clears throat> and the generator, which is down on my deck. I recommend you guys who don't have power now to, after this is all over, go out and buy yourself a generator. I don't care if you've got to scrape the money together. I paid... I think it was a thousand for the generator. It's a Briggs and Stratton 8,000 watt generator. It's a workhorse. I've had the thing running for days. Just keeps on going. Uh, that, and I needed a transfer switch so I could safely hook up the generator to power the house, part of the house, not the whole house, uh, without feeding, without back feeding into the wires. It was very dangerous for repair crews. At the height of the storm in Connecticut, over 700,000 people were without power. And today, as it stands, there's about 130,000. Of course, I'm one of them. But, hey, I'm not going to complain because you know why I'm not going to complain? Here's why I'm not going to complain. There are people right now who don't have an air conditioner running. They don't have TV. They don't have heat. I mean, hot water, I should say. They don't have hot water. They don't have toilet flushing because they have a well pump, just like us. So I had to have the generator hook up to the well pump so you can have water. I have, the, I have water, I have hot water, I have an air conditioner running. The, the internet just came back yes, last night because the cable was out. Now the cable's back and I have electricity hooked up for the TV and cable. So now I can get internet. I'm, I'm, I'm a happy camper and so is Judy. You always have to look at the positive side of things. Now, my garden, I was kind of, I was kind of hurt when I saw the tree. We heard the crack. We were sitting down, we heard the crack. We could see some of the trees in the backyard blowing. All of a sudden, I heard this crack, and Judy says, What the heck is that? Is it a tree hitting the house? And we look out the side window, and the tree had come down. That's been there since we moved in in 98. The tree came down, missed the Honda CRV by about 10 inches, could have went the other way and crashed. I had two cars in the driveway, could have just smashed them to a pancake. It could have hit the house, right? massive damage to my old 215 year old house and then the barn was saved nothing hit the barn that we had built in 2015 so it took out my jalapeno peppers on my raised bed it took it out really bad and I knew in the back of my mind I kept saying I hope nothing hurts my garden like pests like uh, uh, um, rain and storms it wasn't the storm it was the tree that fell on it it's a massive tree. I'd say the diameter of the trunk is about three feet diameter. The, real, the tree was so heavy. But here's how things work, how God works in strange ways. With the massive damage in Connecticut here, it would be months to get that tree removed. Months. Because everybody's super busy if you call a tree service. The tree came down. We look out the window. I walk outside. I see the damage to the garden. I'm bummed out. I come back in. I said, man, that tree's going to be tough, honey, to get back, to, 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 to remove. Two hours after the tree fell, I hear a knock at the door. And my wife says, you better answer the door. I hear somebody knocking. I go to the door. There's a young man there. Well, he's about 40. He's from Ecuador. And he hands me a business card. And he just looks at the tree and he goes, if you need help. So I said, yeah, yeah, I'll call you sometime. Because I was out of sorts then, too, you know. So the next day, I called. Left a message. No, no answer, but I left a message. He didn't call me back. So I figured, well, he's busy. 
the next day, he shows up at the house to look at the tree. And he knocks on the door, and I went out and walked around with him. And he said, I can do this. I can take this tree away. I said, sure, it's kind of big. No, I can do it. My brother and I can help. He helps me. I said, when can you start? He said, I can start today after I finish up a small job down the end of the street here. That's how enterprising this young man was. He had a business card. Right after the storm, he was out there looking for damage. And I said, okay. A couple hours later, he shows up with this little electric tra uh, chainsaw. I'm talking about 16-inch chainsaw electric. I'm saying, what's he going to do with that? He goes out there. He starts cutting these little branches. A few minutes later, I see a woman there with him. must be his girlfriend. She's grabbing the branches and piling them up. About an hour later, this pickup truck pulls up, and it's his brother with a 25-inch steel chainsaw gas. And I say, okay, he's got the big guns. You know, they took that tree out in one day. They removed it and all the wood in one day. Now, I'm talking massive blocks of wood. I don't know how these guys picked it up. I really don't. They worked so hard. And I said, well, I, when I got the estimate, it was 1500 to remove the tree if they left the wood. If they took the wood, it was 2200 It's still a bargain. Trust me, it's still a bargain the size of that tree. So I had the tree removed in two, within a couple days. That would have been months if this guy didn't show up. It was like an angel sent him. And uh, they cleaned up my backyard, which had branches all over. They didn't ask him to clean the backyard. They did it anyway. That's how good these, these young people were. You know, about 40, I say the young because I'm a lot older. But, you know, God does work in strange ways, ladies and gentlemen. God puts things in our path sometimes that we have to realize it's not just a coincidence that it happens. God was there to help. And things could always be worse. Like that tree could have hit the house. It could have hit us. It could have killed us. It could have destroyed both cars. It didn't. Now I look at the bright side. The tree is gone. It'll never fall again and hurt anything. That's one. Number two is, now I have a lot more sunlight for the garden next year because it used to shade out part of the daytime. It used to shade out the garden sometimes. So, you know, it's something you got to always look to the positive aspect of things. People are too negative today. Negativity begets negativity. Kind of, kind of remember that if you can. Now, I'm guilty of that myself. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have responded to a certain posting that was made. But sometimes you have to, I think. Sometimes you have to defend yourself when things aren't quite what people may see, think they are. And I like to be honest when I, when I do things. Like when I wrote in the community page, I wasn't holding anything back. I told you what I made. I told you how much money I made, and that was not a lie. That was what I made. Because people will forgive mistakes. People are always willing to forgive an honest mistake or a mistake that you're willing to admit. What they don't like, people in general, is a cover-up of your mistake, trying to get out of it, trying to cover up something you did that wasn't quite kosher or quite right. You should always live up to your mistakes. I've made a lot in my lifetime. <laughs> Judy can tell you that. People that know me can tell you that. But as I grow older, I've learned things. I've learned to be a little bit more uh, considerate, of other considerate of other people's thoughts and ideas and feelings, and more considerate, considerate of just human nature and human beings in general. That's why I think in a previous post I even said, we're here to learn the lessons of life. And I did say that, and Ed said this to me, that's why I repeat it. The day you can walk down the street, walk down the sidewalk and sidestep an ant, because you know that ant is precious because all life is precious, then maybe you'll start to learn the lessons of life. I'm not perfect. I'm far from it. <laughs> Anybody will tell you that. I swear like a trooper sometimes. I've stolen things in my time, in my day when I was young. I've stolen things from stores. I smoked marijuana. I smoked marijuana when I was young. So what? I smoked it a lot, but not like some people. But for a short time there, I smoked it. Does that make me a bad person? Well, it makes me not a 
strong person because you're giving in to weaknesses that change your mind things that change your thought process when you get really drunk when you get really high on uh, an herb it changes your perception it changes your thought process some people say for the better you know like musical people will say you know I thought of this song when I was high maybe maybe it's true but in the long run it doesn't do a lot of good to your body really that's why I cut down heavily on drinking I used to drink a lot too and when I was a cop a lot of cops drink you know why they drink it's because they're trying to relieve that stress factor that anxiety they're always on edge cops are always on edge and today more than ever I'd never want to be a cop today I mean I hope people do join the force because we need them but I wouldn't want to do it anymore it's too it's too scrutinized now maybe it's different now I don't know but when I was a cop 99.9% .9 of the cops were good people I mean good honest hard-working people of integrity and today I think they're the same you know but of course there's a select few that aren't just like in any profession no profession has a perfect record you know there's more malpractice lawsuits and uh, mistakes made by hospitals and doctors than you can imagine per year you know upwards of 90 100,000 malpractice suits don't quote me because I'm not really sure of the exact number but a lot a lot of mistakes are made now are they honest mistakes sometimes they're honest mistakes same with the police department sometimes the police officer makes an honest mistake but my channel here it's my channel I created the channel for Ed and Lorraine and for me though because when people say it's you know Ed and Lorraine's channel why are you speaking I consider myself an extension of Ed and Lorraine because they were like my total mentors and I'm paying homage to them just like I pay homage to my Taekwondo instructor he has the knowledge he's in he's willing to impart that knowledge to me to tell me how to be how to act how to defend myself how to relax how to be a good respectful person that all comes from Taekwondo from martial arts anybody who's in who uh, is in our martial arts knows exactly what I'm talking about it makes you a better person you know and I hope some of you young guys out there and women and girls go up and go and take a martial art it doesn't have to be taekwondo it could be anything it could be brazilian jiu-jitsu it could be karate it could be kempo karate it could be chinese could be korean could be filipino uh, martial arts brazilian but a martial art trains your body and your mind it helps you focus it makes you believe it it makes you a better person i don't want to fight anybody you know, I'm learning Taekwondo for self-defense, right? That's what most people sign up for. They want to defend themselves. Yes. But now, because I know how to defend myself, I don't have to act cocky like trying to hide the fact that I don't know how to fight. You know, I can fight not that great. There's a lot of people that can just beat me up. They don't even have a, a martial arts experience because they're stronger, they're faster, maybe they're boxers. You know, a martial artist is one thing. A boxer is also another thing. Boxers are very strong. They're very conditioned, and they're very tough. If you go up against a prize fighter, you're in trouble. Trust me. Like Rocky Marciano. <laughs> he was only 184 pounds at 5'10", but he took on guys a lot bigger. He was a heavyweight champ. Mike Tyson. You think I can take Mike Tyson? Of course not. You have to know your limitations, too. But why look for trouble, though? Never look for trouble, and you won't find it. My father used to say that. Never look for trouble, and you're not going to find it. But it's when you start to act super confident, when you try to act super tough, that's when trouble finds you. Don't do it. Don't do it. But as far as integrity goes, as far as like being the better person in this recent exchange I had, I don't know if I'm the better person or not. The person I was arguing with, I don't even really know. And so I just got to let it go. I let it go. All I know is there are a lot of jealous. Here's one thing I do know. There are a lot of jealous people out there. There are people who want the museum. 
there are people who want the Annabelle doll. And I'm not speaking of that person. In gen I'm speaking in general. There are people that wish that they could have been mentored by Ed and Lorraine. They wish they were as close. And they want to take me down. Why? Because they're in the paranormal realm. They want to have their own paranormal expertise shine more than mine. Fine, go ahead. I won't be around that much longer. I mean, you know what I mean? I'm seven, almost 70. I'll be 70 in December. And how many more years do I got? If I'm really healthy and really got good genes, which I don't have good genes, maybe I'll make it to 80, 85. Who knows? I could, right after I uh, stop this, uh, this broadcast, I could keel over, right? That's why you have to treat every day like it's your last. That means also treat it like it's your first day of the rest of your life, right? Be that good person that you know you can be. Learn as much as you can learn. Do I know everything about the paranormal? No. Does, did Ed Warren know everything about the paranormal? No. Did Lorraine? No. They knew a lot, a lot more than most people, but they weren't all-knowing. There's only one all-knowing being, being. Only one all-knowing being, and it's God. It's God, our Creator. And for those of you who don't believe in God, I'm not going to try to change your mind, but I'm telling you from my experience that there is a God. From things that I've witnessed, from things that I've heard, seen, and felt, I know there's a God. When I look in the mirror, I know there's a God because something created me. When I look at nature, when I look at animals. I know that these were created by an intelligent design. I know it. So people say there is not a God. They can't give me a reason why they know there's no God. Now, I can't give you an absolute reason why there is a God. But all you need to do is look around. Look around at creation, at nature, and think how did it all come from nothing? From How did love happen? How did the emotion of love be instilled upon every living per can be instilled upon every living person? The emotion of anger, the emotion of jealousy and envy. How does that happen if it's a random event? If we are random people made by a random event, we shouldn't all be able to experience anger, love, jealousy, hatred, sorrow, grief, but we do. It's being frightened, you walk into a place, you're frightened. Where does all those emotions come from? They don't come from nothing. They come from some intelligent design. Now, getting back to when I talked about aliens in a previous uh, YouTube presentation or, or talk, and I said there could be aliens, I still believe it. Why couldn't God have created other, other uh, beings? Why? It doesn't say anywhere in the Bible that God created only man on earth. It said God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Why can't there be? The Bible is just talking about us here on earth. It doesn't have to tell us about billions of miles away. I really do believe that there are aliens, that there are alien beings out there that can and do think and maybe are more advanced than we are, who knows? We have to be careful in our society going forward because things are rapidly changing in America. Things are rapidly changing in other countries. Look what happened in Lebanon, the bombing. You know, we take it for granted. A lot of people over there that happened over there. They're human beings, they're flesh and blood. They think, they bleed, they love. So any effect that something, anything that affects someone somewhere else also affects us. We're all the same, ladies and gentlemen. We're all the same. That's one thing you have to try to get through your mind is there are no such things as different people. We're all the same people. We all just look different. But we're the same people with the same wants, needs, desires, passions, and striving to be the best we can be. That's what we need to do, be the best we can be in our life. I love doing this channel. I'd like to be able to come on more, but I've been kind of busy lately, especially with the power outages. But if 
you have any ideas for me to talk about certain other subjects, you know, I welcome it. Now, one thing about I like to talk about when I talk about Ed and Lorraine is that they were the dynamic duo. Why? Why were they a dynamic duo? Nobody can replicate it. You know why? Because Ed ate, slept, drank, thought, lived the paranormal. And Lorraine had psychic ability. Put those two together, they're a dynamic duo. They go into a house. The first thing Ed would do is say, Ed, uh, Lorraine, is there anything here in this house? And he's talking about unknown, unseen spirits. And she would look at Ed and say, let me walk through the house and I'll tell you what's going on. She would walk through the house, come back and give him an assessment. She would immediately say to Ed, like in private, yeah, there's something dark here, Ed. There's something demonic, evil. Or she would say it's a human spirit. That's why I know there's human spirits, too, because Lorraine said so. And Lorraine knows. She could tell the difference between a human and a inhuman spirit but that's psychic awareness and so I know how good they were I know that they were the best of the best and I don't say it lightly and I do have to address one little one little thing I always do in one of the comments a, a young man made or, or someone made a comment about how Ed spoke how Ed said I seen it Ed used to say that all the time I seen it for myself he didn't say I saw it or I have seen it, he would say, I seen it. He's seen a ghost. He would say, I, he's seen a ghost. It wasn't proper English. And I never corrected Ed. You want to know why? You want to know why Ed says, I seen it? Because Ed dropped out of school to join the United States Navy in World War II to fight in the war on his 17th birthday. He quit school. My dad quit school on his 15th or 16th birthday to work on construction and then joined the Army. I don't want to hear people criticizing Ed because he said, I've seen it myself. So what? You got the point, right? He saw it. So he says, I've seen it. It kind of makes me upset because it was a different time back then. People weren't so especially lower and middle class weren't so uh, involved in education and going to college Ed was involved in fighting a war to win a war against other nations that were against us they tried to kill us they tried to take over so when I hear things like that it really bothers me that they pick up and nitpick how Ed talked it had more knowledge than anybody I know of in the paranormal realm. And that had world knowledge too. He had real world knowledge. He grew up in a section of Bridgeport, Connecticut, which they used to call the Bloody Bucket. That means Ed knew how to fight. Fight for what he wanted and what he needed. So I don't want to hear that anymore. Any comments like that will immediately be, be uh, removed and the person blocked <coughs> immediately. I'm not even going to answer these comments anymore that are negative. <clears throat> That's why, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Ed didn't use proper grammar. <clears throat> so enough of that on my high horse. I just want you to know it. Lorraine used to say the same thing. I seen it. So what? So, because she was brought up in a different way, era, different era, Lorraine didn't graduate high school either. She went to work during the war. But Ed did get his high school diploma about 50 some odd years later or 60 when Lorraine went to the town hall and they were giving veterans of the war who had dropped out of school in World War II they were giving them diplomas and Lorraine went and had that done for Ed so he did get a high school diploma after all it's not what kind of schooling you have that makes you smart it's your thought process it's what you have learned and gleaned throughout your life experience what makes you smart so ladies and gentlemen until next time you know I hope I see you on a better under better circumstances where I have power back and everybody in my neighborhood has power back and we'll talk more about the paranormal and the supernatural realm but for now I'm gonna sign off so this is Tony Sperry your moderator good night <laughs>